point in time, we're going to turn it over to the pastor for the introduction of the guest speaker. Thank you. Church say amen. 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 Boy, the program moved fast today, didn't it? <laughs> amen. I was sitting there getting ready to enjoy some more of this program. Amen. But, but it is. It's, uh, it's just a blessing. 56 years that these men have been, uh, been standing on the wall for the Lord. So we thank God. It, isn't it, isn't it a wonderful sight to see all these men? Amen. Amen. All, of, all of our men have gone straight. We still have some that is marching on. Amen. I'm, I'm uh, before I called up Pastor Montgomery, if he don't mind, Brother Bonnet, are y'all going to do some singing today? Y'all just over heaven. Thank you, brother. All right, then. All right, let me see. I don't see a... Brother Gilbert, you want to do something for St. John? Equal opportunity. Yes, all right. Amen. Amen. So we do. We just thank God. But it is. It's just good to have these brothers here on today. And, and no matter when we call, they will always be here. And, and we hope that... Uh, we hope that y'all can say the same when it comes to us. Amen. 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 That's what we do. We truly thank God. St. Miles, we have. Uh, we've uh, we've had some good singing from these guys. And, uh, Brother Amen. Leonard has come and uh, he's found for us on the theme. Um, a master ceremony. Brother Grove's done an outstanding job. Amen. Uh, Brother Daniel's done done magnificent of just getting up here taking up an offering. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we know through all of that a program is not completed until we hear from the Lord. Amen. 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 And, uh, and truly we got a we got a preacher here today. Amen. We got a preacher here today and, and I'm just uh, I'm so thankful so thankful of having him. Matter of fact I uh Saw Pastor Montgomery last time we was over at uh, <coughs> Pastor Gilmore's funeral. And uh, as we was coming out, I, I told him, I said, Pastor, I got to find some way to get you over to the church this year. This, and uh, then got back into the church. And two days later, I asked Brother Leonard, I said, Brother Leonard, have y'all thought about who y'all want for the brotherhood? And he said, well, what do you think about Pastor Montgomery? And I said, hey, that's a good choice. We're going to get it. Amen. 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 So that's how the Lord works. Amen. Amen. So uh, and so we are we're 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 just truly blessed and what we're blessed about on today is that not only is this a, a man of God and I've been knowing Pastor Montgomery for a long knowing when he pretty much started off preaching uh, and uh, he's been on fire Amen ever since he started running uh, but the, but the other thing is is that not only not only do I consider this a friend and, and uh, one thing Gilmore taught us, friends don't have to talk every day. But, but this is how you judge a friend. If I call you, you're an answer and come see about me. And, and I have no doubt that if I call this preacher, he's going to answer and he's going to come see about us. And not only that, but he knows I'm the same. If he calls, I'm going to answer and I'm going to come see about him. But the other good thing is, is that he pastored this church. Amen. And so it's just good to be able to bring it. Matter of fact, when he got in the office back there, Sister Montgomery asked me, could he plug his, his uh, tablet in? And I told him, I said, I may need to ask you, can I plug mine in? <laughs> uh, but we do. We just thank God. But hey, at this time, we're going to do it like we do in the old Baptist church. I'm going to ask that you would elevate your right hand and receive this man of God, Pastor Raphael Montgomery, from Mount Calvary Baptist Church out of Baytown, Texas. Amen. 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 The church say, Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for these men. We are thankful to God and we honor Pastor Pruitt and all of these 
wonderful men of God who graced the rostrum this afternoon. And each of you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, it is another good day. Yes. The Lord has allowed us to be found in the house of prayer. Yes. And we are so happy to be here with you at St. Miles to help you celebrate 56 years of brotherhood. Amen. 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 Brother standing on fire for the Lord. And we thank God for Pastor Pruitt and this invitation. We are just so happy to be here. We have a segment of the Calvary family that is here with us. We're going to ask that uh, you would stand and be recognized at this time. Calvary family. Amen. Amen. Render two songs of your choosing the direction of our minister of music, Amen. Brother Mox. So we would ask if you would come at this time. Amen. And give us what the Lord has uh, given you. And then I'll come back and I'll give you this homily that I have. And, <laughs> Amen. And, Amen. We're going to uh, hug and kiss on one another yes, for a while. And, Amen. And then we're going to all go home and get some rest. Amen. 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 Sister Montgomery, wave your hands so everybody can see you. Amen. 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 And now the hands of uh, Brother Monks as he comes. Amen. Amen. With songs of his children.
we gonna talk about today. God will bless us. I am so happy to be here with you today as you celebrate 58 years of brotherhood here at the St. Miles Missionary Baptist Church. I am particularly, I'm particularly um, happy uh, to be here because uh, the history of St. Miles is part of my history. Amen. I would not be where I am. I would not know what I know. I would not be able to go where I go and do what I do had it not been for the part that St. Miles has played in my life. So I say to the St. Miles family that I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the love that you showed through the years and to Pastor Pruitt for allowing us to come back. Amen. And be together on this day. And I'm particularly happy to be here with the brotherhood. Uh, because the fact of the matter is is that uh, oftentimes in the church and particularly in the African American church experience and in societal uh, uh, means and, and visions and, and sight, uh, the black man is viewed as a non-existent man. But I've come to let you know that the devil is a lie. Amen. Amen. That our men are strong and our men are faithful and our men are God-fearing and our men will lead the way as we strive to be who God is calling us to be. And as men, we need to always remember that no matter what comes or what goes in life, that God will bless us. Even when it looks like we're not being blessed, even when it feels like you're not blessed, even when folk are trying to tell you you're not blessed, you better learn how to lift your hands and give God some praise and let somebody know that yes, I am blessed because I serve a blessing God. Uh, but we need to realize that no matter how saved one is, and no matter how sure one is with his or her relationship with the Lord, All right. there comes moments, there comes events in life yeah. that will cause those of us who love the Lord oh, to actually find ourselves almost questioning the validity of the God that we serve. All right, all right. It, it does not matter how long you've been a Christian and how great your Christianity is. It, 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 something is going to transpire in your life. Something will happen in your life. A storm will show up in your life that will make you question whether or not the God that you have been serving is worthy of your service. I know you want to act like you ain't never asked God no question and you want to act like you've always been hallelujah, thank you Jesus, but there are some real folk in here that don't mind testifying that there have been some times in my life when all hell had broken loose and I asked the Lord, Lord, where in the world are you? Did you leave me? Did you forget about me? Did you forget my address? Do you not know my name? Lord, do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here that's ever asked the Lord, Lord, where are you in the time of my struggle? Question. Uh, and the reality is that someone who doesn't believe is always watching those who do believe to see how they are going to react in the times of trouble, tragedy, and tribulation. Non-believers don't watch you when everything is going right. Non-believers ain't paying no attention to you when you got more money than you have, than you have bills. Non-believers are not watching you when you have more friends than enemies. All oh, but letting the trouble show up in your life. They gonna watch every move you make. There was a song. There was a song. Every step you take. Every move you make, I'll be watching you. There's some non-Christians who are watching and have watched how Christian folk act during moments of difficulty. And some of them have used as their reason for not believing or not being a Christian 
the excuse of how the Christians act. If the Christian loses his cool and blows his staff, then what do they expect the non-Christian to do? they know the Lord will make a way somehow and when somehow hadn't shown up yet they done lost their mind and went crazy they gonna say why in the world would I want to be a part of this if the Christian loses, loses his cool what is the non-Christian then? When trouble comes and everybody is always looking for, for a reaction from God. Trouble comes and everybody is always looking for a reaction from God. Everybody is always looking for a response from God. Everyone is always waiting to see what God is going to do about this. And if while you are waiting, it appears that God is not moving, if it appears that God is not responding, if it appears that God is not involved, those who didn't believe in the first place seem to get emboldened in their non-belief. Oh, they start talking to you crazy. What's your God going to do now? Why are you still going down there to that church house? Why are you still going to Bible study in Sunday school? Have you not seen what you're going through? Do, 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 do you not see where you live? Do you not feel the sickness in your body? They get confident and boisterous in their non-belief. Just as they did just as they did in our text today. Uh -huh. You see, in the former psalm, the past wonders which God had shown were, were recounted in his honor. And in the present psalms, he is entreated to glorify himself again. Uh -huh. Because heathens were presuming upon the absence of miracles, they begin to assume that God could not be who we believe he is. All right. They begin, they begin, Brother David, to deny the miracles of former ages. And they begin insulting the people of God with questions where is now their God? And the psalmist seeks to be asking God and uh, asking God for vindication of God's own self. Yeah. Asking God to move in such a way that the unbeliever will know that God is real. Yeah. I wonder... Is there anybody here that's ever asked God while you were going through the tough times of life and it seemed that the devil and his imps were getting the upper hand and it looked like your haters were rising above you and it looked like your situation was about to take you out. Did you ever in those moments of despair plead unto God, if you don't mind, could you just show up for me right now? If you don't mind, Lord, could you just come into my situation right now and turn the things around for me? Lord, if you don't mind, could you just stop by and see about me? Now, now, Lord, it's not that I don't believe in you. It's not that I'm doubting, nor am I questioning you. But, Lord, to be real with you, I'm about to lose my mind dealing with these folk who are. Mister, I'm about to go crazy dealing with the folk who don't believe in you because they say you're not real because they're watching what I'm going through. The 
about to go crazy trying to convince folks that great are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. I, I, I'm going crazy trying to convince them that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I'm going crazy trying to convince them that if I wait, I say on the Lord, everything else will be all right. But I'm glad that I know you enough that when things are not working out the way that I want them to work out, if I just hold on to your unchanging hand, I know sooner or later this thing gonna turn around. So Lord, what I'm asking for is really not for me. It's that they may see your glory through my story. That they may see you move in the midst of what I'm going through. That may put their hearts and allow them to know if he can do it for me. Oh, he can do it for you too. You and I must understand that while going through the trials and tribulations of life, that there are some things that the Lord has assigned to our situation. Yes, sir. Yes. I know we weren't going to get too many amens right there. Because you don't want to believe that there are some things that you just got to go through. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't sell it to nobody else. You can't buy it and give it to nobody else. You can't auction it to nobody else. You don't need an opinion poll. You don't need a straw poll. You don't need a canvas poll. You just got to go through it. And the more you try to run from it, the longer it takes for you to go through. There's somebody in here right now. The Lord sent you to St. Miles so he can confirm with you that Just like Peter Gold. I wish 
I wish I had somebody that would holler. I'm coming out. I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I'm coming out. I don't know what I got to cry, but I'm coming out. I don't, I don't know no frustrations I got to deal with, but I am coming out. And when I come out, I will be better. in my life. Uh, in reality, what you thought was going to hurt you is going to help you. So therefore, brethren, and sister, you won't always see God move to bring you out miraculously. Sometimes God will develop you and change you while you are in it mercifully. Did you miss that? He's not going to give you a miracle to bring you out of that. But he's going to give you some mercy while you're in that. That when God won't change your situation, he'll change you while you're in the situation. Oh, I wish I had somebody that know you've been changed and just how a wonderful change has come over me. I can deal with folk on my job that used to get on my nerves because he didn't pull me out miraculously, but he left me in there mercifully and he gave me everything that I needed to endure my trials and my tribulations. Thank you, Lord. The psalmist says to us that we need to stop worrying about the reaction of the heat. No matter what you go through, no matter what God does for you, no matter what God brings you through, they are never going to understand. Some of you need to stop calling folk trying to get them to understand your point of view. I don't know who that was for, but about five folk over here and about three people over here that need to say, Lord, I'm done trying to call folk to try to explain my point of view. Because they ain't going to never understand it no how. And, and, and I can cure cancer, and I can, and I can, and I can cure lung disease, and they'll be mad at me because I didn't cure blood disease. You, 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 so, so, so just stop it. says they have mouths but can't speak. Yeah. They have eyes and can't see. They have ears but cannot hear. They have noses and cannot smell. Hands but they cannot hold. Feet but they cannot walk. Throats but they cannot talk. They say so why are you getting all bent out of shape over their, their opinion? Why are you so worried about what they are saying about your relationship with the Lord? Why are you letting them cause you to miss your blessing? Because you're so upset with what they are saying about you. The fact that you always come to church. Uh, you always giving God praise. And you're still uh, not making it a going any higher. Ah, uh, you come to church mad because they talking about you coming to church. You miss that. You come to church mad because they talking about you coming to church. If I'm going to go anywhere glad, it's going to be to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in to the house of this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist meets us in verse 9. And he says, trust in the Lord. And if I had to give you some points today, my first and only point would be trust in the Lord. Whatever others do, if you know the Lord, trust in it. 
Keep fast to the, to the Lord who chose you. Prove your loyalty to your God by showing your confidence in him. Whatever our troubles may be, let us not fear nor falter, but rest in him who is able to vindicate his own honor and protect his own servants. He tells the priest in verse 10 to trust in the Lord and everything will be all right. And I know I'm talking to the men today. The men will testify that many people think that when you're walking with the Lord, that every day is a good day. But we need to be real for a minute and testify I've had some good days and I've had some bad days. Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. And I've had to learn oh, that in whatsoever state I'm in, therein to be content. Whatever I'm going through, I've learned how to turn it over to Jesus. And I got a witness here. He will work it out for you. No matter if I'm up or no matter if I'm down, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you because he's able to keep me. How do you know he's able to keep you? Because you've come this far leaning on the Lord and he's never failed you yet. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here that don't mind testifying? God's been good to me. He's brought me from a mighty long way. And every time I turn around, the Lord keeps on making a way for me. If you're not too mean, find your three people and give them a half high and say, neighbor, I trust in the Lord because he's been good to me. I trust in the Lord because he's watched over me. I trust in the Lord because he's taken care of me. And I love what the psalmist says. He says the Lord has been mindful of us and that the Lord will bless us. That's your shouting cue right there. I'm going to punch balls. Hit rewind and play it one more game. The Lord will bless us. That's your shouting cue. I'm going to punch balls. Punch rewind and play it one more game. The Lord will bless us. Ain't he all right? The Lord will bless us. No matter what you're going through, the Lord will bless us. No matter how dark your night is, the Lord will bless us. No matter who talking about you. The Lord will bless us. If you're not too mean, find a neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good news. The Lord will bless us. And I don't know what you're standing in need of, but go ahead and tell him thank you. Yes, yeah. 
get closer Get in the brother You know the story They led him From judgment hall To judgment hall Placed him On an old Rugged cross Hung him Between two teams They dropped him low They hung him high They stretched him wide
uh, Deacon McGasket, who always take good care of me. Amen. 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 Deacon McGasket, I told him in the back, if somebody tried to hurt past, there was going to be some furniture movement. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You always leave one of them in the crowd. Amen. 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 Sometimes I just think about how good God is to me. 